We realize there's a, a very large gap for a very specific type of technology, which is what we identified the smart label. Yep. You uh, don't have to search for your assets. We are talking to companies who have dedicated full-time equivalents that are searchers. So when you're talking about manufacturing industry, that look inside of the warehouse and search for lost items. Hello, IPXers. We are at the Things Conference in Amsterdam. It's all about IoT, all about how you're going to take your projects, your designs, implement them and bring them to real life. And as we've been talking a lot, actually, about how you take your business case and bring it to fruition. Lots of different companies at this show, from silicon to energy harvesting, to software, to battery management all kinds of things and then every now and then you stumble across something and you go what's that this is one of those moments we've met Chiara who is the founder and CEO of her own company called Truvami that makes a smart label now it would be very difficult in industrial electronics or any kind of IoT application where you've got to monitor data where you're not going to label it and try and follow it and I'm assuming that's what you do yes that's right so tell us about why people have said, IPX, you've got to go and talk to Trivami. Why have they done that? Yes, thank you, Guy. I'm, I'm glad you're here and uh, to tell you more about the smart label. So we are in the asset tracking business for around one, one and a half years now. Talk to a lot of different customers, try to identify their needs. What do they need in an asset tracking solution? We have a couple of other products out there too but we realize there's a, a very large gap for a very specific type of technology, which is what we identified the smart label. Yeah. So when you talk about logistics, for example, they have uh, systems in place today where they have the visibility on the asset if it goes inside of the warehouse and when it leaves based on RFID or uh, barcode manual barcode scanning or such kind of things but they don't have the high resolution on the position inside of the warehouse or outside. Right, so if we're talking about disruptive technology, we're saying that there's absolute infrastructure to do asset management, but it's the precision that is the key thing. It's one among of the key things. Okay, yes. okay. all right. I think it's not only about precision, it's also about the battery life and the size and there are a lot of different components that factor in finding the perfect device for your IoT solution. Right, so today if I'm a design engineer and I'm having to, uh, and, and my job is to do incremental improvements in my design, so I already have an infrastructure, what do you see as the pillars of that infrastructure today? In the end, it really depends on the business needs that needs to be completed by this, uh, by this part of the infrastructure. Of course, uh, in an ideal scenario, you have the full visibility of every asset in uh, every second of the day forever. Yep. But that's, from a physics perspective, not uh, realistic to do. So and you, I would yeah. think almost entirely unnecessary. Yes. So you have to strip it down to uh, the exact business needs that uh, you want to to gain from, from the solution that you implement. And yeah, a lot of those infrastructure logistics companies already have an, a solution, for example, where you have just uh, binary visibility, I would call it. Is it... Uh, we have had that come up a lot today. Yes. Binary solutions, digital, on, off, just one way, mm -hmm. lack of subtlety and nuance. That has come up a lot in the interviews that we've had today. So we've had two, two really interesting things come up. One is, in the IoT world, business, business first, technology second. Yes. And the second thing that's come up is this idea that everything is binary and what people need is more insight into what's actually going on in order to make that business case real. Yes. So can you just explain a little bit more about then the nuance, the subtlety, that part of it, what, what, what that is all about? Yes, so this uh, added uh, nuance that we provide with the label is that you have the visibility inside of the warehouse, for example, where is it exactly, down to a couple of meters. So you can optimize your processes, you uh, don't have to search for your assets. We are talking to companies who have dedicated full-time equivalents that are searchers, so when you're talking about manufacturing industry, that look inside of the warehouse and search for lost items. If you think about it, human it's beings. crazy. Human you're beings. about human beings. <laughs> human beings that search for, for lost assets, so that's already crazy. 
but uh, so that's already a game changer if you have the visibility inside of the warehouse. But then also when you go outside, you have no idea where it goes once it leaves the company site. And this is also where the smart label steps in with the passive GNSS technology that can also localize outdoors. What was that phrase you just used? Passive? Passive GNSS. So it's uh, like GNSS, so Global Navigation Satellite System, yep. um, but in a passive way. So you do not communicate directly with the satellite, but uh, you just uh, kind of uh, sniff the signals. Right. And then the whole computation is done in the cloud. So you kind of shift the battery heavy computations from the device itself to the cloud. So in a way that's assuming where it is. Would that be fair? Uh, yeah, it assumes it and it's, it sees the satellites, but it doesn't directly interact with them. So it, uh, it's not as battery intensive. We have a saying that I picked strange about alien technology. <laughs> when I haven't got a clue what the person that I'm interviewing is talking about, I go, that must be alien technology. <laughs> I mean, uh, it's from outer space. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So how do you, how, how, does, how, does, a, how does an asset sniff or maybe your proprietary intellect, so maybe you can't answer that question, but an asset will sniff a satellite signal and then I'm taking it through some sort of analysis of data, some algorithm, it can more or less work out where it is. Yes, so it's actually not our proprietary intellect, but it's uh, the one from Semtech. So it's based on right. their uh, lower cloud system. So that's got that in there. Exactly, yes. Right, right, okay. So. If this didn't exist today, we're back to those RFID tracking systems. So is it, is it fair to say that what you've put in this label, unique's a very overused word in life, full stop, but do you think that that is a unique solution? Yeah, as of today, uh, we have nothing seen like it. That's why we, had, we felt the urge to make it. Right, right, <laughs> okay. So I'm a designer engineer at, at an OEM. I've been given the job, um, or in fact, if you if you think that I don't know, I've got a better solution because the infrastructure that I've got today is just good enough. But I still have people wandering around factories looking for assets. Mm -hmm. Nobody asks the question of that's a bit mad or <laughs> insane, as you said. My question is, what's the evaluation process? To see whether this really does what you say that it does. Yes, so uh, maybe also to add to that, it's not just the label then that we provide, but also the full stack integration. So we also yes. have a, a solution. Um, but first we will uh, start a pilot with the customer and uh, define the business need, as I mentioned earlier, and also the success metrics. So in, in order to be able to show the, or prove the ROI of the solution, we first need to define what is the success metric. And then based on that, we can uh, set up the pilots and show that the solution really brings this value uh, that the customer in the end hopes it will receive from it. Right. You may not be able to answer this question, but this actually is my last question. If you were to take a very typical factory automation, there's inefficiency in there, isn't there? Are you able to put a number up? I can improve asset manage by, management by 10%. I can improve asset management by 15%. Are you able to put a number on that? Well, that's very a broad statement. I think it's not just about improvement. It's on one hand also reducing the costs of a lost asset. You can in increase the efficiency of your searching right. process. You can improve your general operational efficiency by integrating it in your own system. So having uh, right. different locations uh, trigger certain actions in your ERP system, for example. So, so there's under the bonnet implications to doing this better. Yes. Not just the asset tracking. You have to take into account the whole system, the loss and everything else that goes with it. Yes, exactly. Okay, all right. So, I've never heard of Truvami and their smart label. How is the best way to, if, they, if, they, if somebody wants to get hold of you, apart from come to my website, how um, would they do an evaluation? Yeah, you can either reach out. The answer out. to that, Kiara, is to come to my website, just so, you, just so we're clear. <laughs> but anyway, if they didn't come to my website, what <laughs> website would they go to? And how would they, what, what would be the starting point? They can either reach me through LinkedIn, uh, Kiara Kopmans, or you can find our website, uh, truvami.com. You can there schedule a discovery call. We can directly dive into your asset tracking project and uh, see where we can uh, take, you, take you to the next level. Very good. Thank you very much for your introduction. Thank you, guys. Thank you.
Hey, where my engineers at?